Okay, this section is 4.4 independence. We're going to start off with the definition of it. Okay, so if we have a set of vectors, they are linearly independent. If the only solution to this linear combination, which is equal to zero, is that each of these constants are all zero. So if all the constants are zero, then it is linearly independent. Otherwise, the vectors are linearly dependent. Let's look at a couple examples in R2. What does this look like in R2? Well, this wasn't really an example. This was just a statement. So in this scenario, one, zero, zero, one, are they linearly independent? So we have to set up our linear combination of the two and we set it equal to zero. It is the zero, zero vector. And we need to solve for C1 and C2. And we can pretty much just see here this equation right here. This times this is equal to zero. We write that out. And this times this is C2 equals zero. That's our solution. So linearly independent since C1 and C2 are our solution, or the only solution. What's going to happen? We take one zero and we add this vector. So let's work it out. So just so we can make sure we're setting this up right, this is a two by three, three by one, and we get a two by one. I don't think we need to row reduce this. I think we can write out our equations. So this first one is C1 plus C3 equals zero. This is the second two. Parameterize this equation since it looks like we have infinite solutions. So we plug in negative two here. Let's check. We're plugging, this is for C1, C2, C3. If you wanna write that out, this is my Yeah, so 2 plus 0 minus 2 is 0. That's 0. Since we found a non-zero solution, then our conclusion is it's dependent, which is basically not independent. Same thing. I think that was the question, though. So is this set independent in R3? So just to remind us, okay, so if we set this up, again, this is my V1, this is my V2, this is my V3. And we can write this as a linear combination and set it equal to zero and solve that system. And if the only solution is zero, then yes, it's linearly independent. So let's do this. So now this can be written as a matrix. So I'm gonna go through a few different methods so you can, I can remind you how to solve for this and remind you of some properties too. So here's our first method to solve this that we learned. We could augment. I'm actually not going to solve anything until the very last method. I'm just going to explain it. So if we augment it and then we row reduce, I just want to remind you, if we row reduce and we can row reduce 
to i. Well, then what do we have? We have c1 equals 0. This is c2 equals 0. And this is c3 equals 0. Then it'll be independent. So that's one way to do it. Our method two is we can use Kramer's rule. And we can only use Kramer's rule if a does not equal to zero. Okay, so method two can't be for all. But if we do use Kramer's rule, we'll get c1 equals to a1 divided by a. Again, but this can't equal to zero. But what's going to happen is we're going to take our b and replace it with row one. Our b is zero. It gets replaced here. We get zero, zero, zero. And when we find the determinant, you have a row of zeros, actually a column of zeros here. It doesn't matter which. And we get zero for a1, which is going to be zero. c1, zero. Same thing here. c2 is a2. We replace this here, and we would use that as our determinant along that column two. And if those are all zeros, we get zero. And lastly, we replace that row of zeros in the third column. We get the determinant is zero. So we get, this is if. We can only use this if the determinant's not zero. We get C1, okay? And then, last but not least, how do we know if A inverse exists? Remember that? The determinant's not equal to zero. And what we have here is AX equals or B is zero, right? AX equals zero, because that's our setup. So A inverse exists. We left multiply. But remember, this is our X. And this is our zero vector. Okay, then. So I think we just found our easiest method. If A inverse exists, I think we proved this in chapter two. So let's find A. I'm actually gonna clear out these as zeros. And remember, if we just do minus two row one plus row two to row two, that does not change the determinant. my minor because those minors will zero out but this is also positive so it doesn't really matter what number that is as long as it's not zero that means a inverse exists and since we're solving this system a x equals zero it implies that x is equal to zero is the only solution so C1, therefore, is independent. Okay, we'll do one more. Okay, so determine if these three polynomials are independent in P2. So let's solve this linear combination, which is equal to zero, and see if what we get for the Cs. So I'm going to use method three. I'm actually going to zero one more out before I do this. Maybe that three. Oops, I'm adding it to column three. Here's a minus four plus nine. And let's go ahead and find our determinant using that. This is so using the backwards idea it is dependent. That's it for today, but I'm going to have a second video, part two on this section. Thanks for watching.